Men, men, men. Hi, everybody. Okay, so tonight, super exciting. I am going outside the box on this one. I am bringing on the men. So I've been talking about this all day long because I want to get the men coming in and I want to add the men. I had at least one man be like, woohoo, be there at eight o'clock. So that is good. Um, and, and I really want to get the men talking for themselves. I do a lot of talking for men and I want you women to hear them. I want you to hear what's inside their head, what is inside their hearts when it comes to dating, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to how all of that changes as we age and how we, when we switch from one relationship to another relationship, how we evolve going through these relationships how sometimes the dating process can tear us down a little bit, um, what it's like looking for that person who is going to build you up. So welcome everybody to what I'm really considering a special episode of the Tuesday night 8 p.m. live because I want to get the men talking. Um, so I'm going to open this up and i'm going to start watching who's popping on because i'm going to bring you on and we are going to have this conversation i want to know what's on your mind i want to know how do women win your heart what's your biggest turnoff when it comes to dating like what what do women do wrong when they're on the first date or a second date or a third date um and how can we make all of this easier for you so i have been talking for men for the past almost four years. My first book was published in 2016. I basically launched in 2016. Um, guys, by the way, thank you for voting for me, everybody who did. Uh, I am a platinum winner, which is basically second place for the uh, Waterloo Region record, which is like, you know, basically the newspaper that covers this whole area. Um, and every year they have a Reader's Choice Award and I was nominated for Life Coach and I got the Platinum Award for Life Coach. I want to thank everybody who voted for me. That was amazing, completely unexpected. I didn't expect to get nominated. I really didn't expect to place. Um, so that is so special. It's so super heartwarming. I love your love. I love your love. And you know I'm here for you. You know I love you back. Um, so anyways, going back to what I was saying, I've been speaking for men since I published my first book, which is No More Assholes. And men love No More Assholes because I get women to see them, right? There's a difference between mindsets. So selfish short-term thinking versus generous long-term thinking. So we have guys or we have girls or we have women or we have men. Joe, Joe, I'm bringing you on my friend. Joe, I'm going to, why can't I see? Allow your viewers to request to join you. Joe, send me a request. Come on here. Let's have a conversation. Um, let's get you talking. I don't know why I can't um, see that you're on my list of like guests, but um, I don't know. It's, it's not showing me. Like it, it shows that I have a viewer count. It doesn't show me the specific viewers. I'd love to bring you on. If I can't bring you on to like chat and put you up in that bubble up there, um, let's just hear, Joe, what your side is of dating, women, relationships, mindset, winning your heart, uh, what frustrates you, what makes you happy, right? All of those things. Women want to know what's going on inside your minds. Like, I have men who come to me for coaching and they say, you know what, like, it's time. It's time for me to get into a relationship. I'm fumbling around. It's not working out so far. I need you to take me, you know, from where I am to where I want to be. I need you to help me bridge that gap and get those behavior changes that I need to do in order to get there. And I say, what is, what do you feel your obstacle is? And often men will say to me that women complain that they're hard to read. Uh, they say communication is, is their biggest obstacle when it comes to getting in a relationship, opening up, showing who they are. Um, so let's talk. Let's, you know, let's get the women seeing that you're there. Let's, hi, Kim. Kim, you don't have a penis. I'm not bringing you on, girlfriend. <laughs> I want the men. I want the men to come on with me. 
Um, so guys, if you need to change something, Patrick, how are you? Patrick is chatty. I know Patrick is chatty. Patrick loves to talk. I'm going to add Patrick in because I, and we're going to get Patrick talking about dating and relationships and love and how hard it is to be out there. You know, like I say a lot to both men and women about dating, about getting in relationships, about saying no to the wrong people, about the mistakes that we often make. And my language is, <laughs> it just says, putting the phone down, I think is my biggest frustration. Yes. Um, Patrick, there you are. Hello, Wayne. Hello. You too. Bad hair day. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. You know what? I just kind of go and I just like stick stuff in there. Um, so Patrick, let's, let's talk about, um, well, what do you want to talk about? Let's, whoa, hey, whoa, too much info. Well, I'm, in, I'm covered. Right. I got clothes on. Are you wearing a shirt? No, Put no, shirt I'm, in, I'm in. This is my oh, show. I'm You're, getting ready for bed. This is, this is I'm getting ready for bed. Table. Go put a shirt on okay. my dining room table. There we go. <laughs> Here we go. I covered it up. Yeah. Awesome. I don't have a hairy chest, so don't worry Good about stuff, it. Good stuff, Patrick. Ladies, Patrick is a sweet guy. Um, so, Patrick, what do you want to talk about? Bring me a topic. Um, well, <clears throat> I, I don't know about a topic, but uh, you asked a question earlier on what is a man, you know, wanting to uh, let a woman know. And uh, it's well known that we don't speak the same language, but women still speak cryptically. It's like we're supposed to read their mind. And I'm not a mind reader. I have a crystal ball, but I don't read minds. And uh, I'm, I'm not joking. I do have a crystal ball. Um, I have that as a joke because so many times arguments or discussions are all around a thought process of, partial information right right and if it's partial information people go off in the wrong tangents make assumptions we shouldn't make assumptions but when you're only getting part of the story you have to fill in the blank somehow right and then things get worse yeah. so uh women who say they love to communicate and then shut down because they go well that's not a battle i want to fight today right. well communication isn't about just always about picking all the battles it's not battles it's communication a communication shouldn't be about battles it should be about okay what is it you like what is it i like and what can we work on together mm -hmm. because not everybody's um you know 100 percent identical and i don't think you would want a relationship like that personally um but that's what i'm finding is communication not listening right so uh, there's listening and then there's understanding right? Yeah. And that, I mean, that is something that I work with people a lot when I'm working with, uh, like whether it's dating or whether it's people who are in a relationship, uh, I, I, I really hear women often say he should know and it's not fair. And we need to take into account that exactly. men do not have the same brain that we do. And so there's, there's things that I actually teach women to help them communicate better with men. And one is, first of all, use less words because uh, you guys tend to process, like your brain works with around five to 7,000 words a day. Our brain works with around 20,000 words a day. So I like to teach women to be very direct in their language because the more words we use, the more the message gets lost in the words. Um, and then being communicative, but you know, one of the things that you mentioned is how women will sometimes not bring you, uh, like there's something on their mind and, and you have to try and figure out what it is. And, you know, if you're working with one of my women, maybe what she's doing and hopefully what she's doing, it's not stewing with the intent of trying to find how she's going to tip for tat, but instead what she's doing is thinking about the solution before she comes to you with the problem so that, it's not just, I got a problem and you have to fix it, which isn't fair. You know, coming back to my number one relationship role, it's not fair to ask for anything you're not willing to do first. So if you want solutions, then I always advise people to think of the solution before they come with a problem. And then the listening part is so important because men, I know you don't hear a word we say until you feel we understand what you're trying to say. So I actually 
teach women to, if they're coming with, you know, something like you don't understand and he comes back with, well, you don't understand either. I should teach her to take her turn second and get him to express what he's saying, what he needs to say so that the sound inside of his head of all the things that he needs to say in order to feel understood so that, you know, he can get that out of his head. So it's not this whooshing noise going on that he can't hear us above. Well, there's also the one thing that I heard, or and I've seen it, but I try not to uh, think about it most of the time, is that a woman will sometimes um, want to just vent and not want a solution, right. where men want to solve problems. Yeah. So if women were to approach it and like, because we don't know whether you want a solution or you don't, or you just want to be heard. So if you say, you know, I'm not looking for a solution, I, I just w need a listening ear. Yeah. Then the man can go, I'm not going to shut my brain off, but I'm not going to dive in to find you solutions. Mm -hmm. Right. So it sort of like allows the brain to relax. In my opinion, that's just a thought process that I'm thinking our brain's like going ding, ding, ding. Well, I would have done this. I could say this and you should do this. And, and the brain's doing and not fully absorbing everything that she's saying at the same time. Right. So men have issues with listening when they're trying to find solutions when there isn't a solution to be found it's just a listening ear so how helpful would it be if a woman came to you and said patrick i've had a really shit day today and i just want to vent and when i'm done i just want you to put your arms around me and tell me everything is going to be okay perfect ladies are you taking notes yeah Awesome. 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 What else, Patrick? Yeah, it's your show. It's You're my the, show. The, I know. Yeah, no. I'm single for a reason. I don't think of everything, right? <laughs> I, my age, I'm single because uh, my fitness level, um, I, I make a lot of assumptions uh, based on um, people's reaction when I tell them that I run. Oh, because I, I get reactions right away like, oh, I can't run or I can't keep up to you. I'm not asking people to keep up to me. Right. Right. I'm not asking them to be my equal on running because I don't expect them, like if they do something that I don't do, that they would expect me to be as good as them. Mm -hmm. Like I, my first wife wouldn't run and I understood that and I, I didn't push her to run. Right. But she was excelled at a couple of things that I didn't. And that bothered her because she could, you know, kick my ass playing ping pong or something. But she would get mad that I couldn't keep up. But if we were to go for a run and she couldn't keep up, I wouldn't get mad. Mm -hmm. So there's that, you know, competition thing with some people. They've got to l l lose it. Like I'm competitive, but not in the relationship aspect of things. It's just like if you put running shoes on, whether you're male or female, my partner or not, I'm out there to do my best. Mm -hmm. I'm not out there to beat you. Yeah. Right? Ladies, this is one of the seven key elements that men look for in a woman. Have your own life. You don't need to do everything that he's doing with him. Men love that you have individuality, you have separate interests, and then you come home and talk about those interests because men are intelligent and they want to expand their world. They want to learn new things. So if you're doing things that are different from what he's doing and then come home and talk about that, he loves that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't mind experiencing new things, but don't stomp on me because I'm not as good as you. Yeah. Right? Because I wouldn't do that to anyone else. Yeah. Right? That's just me, though. So important to right? build each other up. Thank you, yeah, Patrick. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to pop you off. I'm going to get Larry on Thank here because I can. Thank okay. You. Sounds good. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Larry, I see you. Don't go anywhere, Larry. Don't go anywhere. I am adding you on because, so here's what I know about um, Facebook Live. Uh, people need to have a iPhone. Um, I can't bring on people if they're on a um if they're on a laptop and I'm on my iPhone. So I understand now that this is why it's harder to 
to find people to bring on because not all of you are on the same device as me. Larry is popping up. I love it, love it, love it. Guys, I'm so excited about tonight. So excited to get the men talking. So excited to get their state of mind, to find out what makes them happy. Ladies, I love teaching you about good men because I'm steering you towards them. They are so worth the effort. They are worth the wait. And here's the thing, good men will wait for you because they know that a quality relationship relationship is a process they're not rushing into anything and here's the thing like again I coach men right and I have so many men who say online dating is hard because you meet somebody and you want to get to know them but they're just like wanting to hop into bed way too soon and who would have thought males would say this um, but they do like good like guys who are just looking for a fling just a roll in the hay here today gone tomorrow they want that quickness to sexuality men who are looking for a long-term relationship are not looking to rush and in fact they will go at your pace it's just you need to set the pace um and so i'm telling you ladies Honestly, honestly, good men are frustrated at how fast women want to get to sex. So keep this in mind. Um, let's see who I can add here. Larry turned me down. I'm not happy about that. I don't like rejection. <laughs> Nobody likes rejection. Um, that's too bad because Larry, out of all the 11 people that I see on here, Larry is the only male that I can bring on. And Larry is not commenting either, which is sad, sad, sad. Uh, Joe says, I'm not a cam guy, but no bubble popped up when you tried to add me. That's because you're on Android, Joe. I want to add you, but when I bring up the list of people who were actually watching, like I, I see you guys when you're commenting, but um, like I can see Veronica and I can see Larry but that's it so I think it's only picking up the people who are on compatible devices on the same device like iPhone to iPhone kind of thing or if anybody's watching on a laptop it's not showing me that they're on and and I'm kind of saying this from experience because I've gone through this before where I've tried to ask guest speakers on um, so yeah so anyways well I hope you guys are learning something from here so the men who are on since I don't see you because if I did I'd be adding you for sure um, Type out what it is that's on your mind. What uh, what's hard about dating or about relationships or about women? You know, and listen. I'm, when do you get an opportunity to vent about women? Like who gets that? Oh, Larry, I can't right now. My daughter is sitting across from me, and she's not ready. Next time for sure. Okay. Well, you know what? Thank you for your future willingness, Larry. I do appreciate that. Thank you for the comment for letting me know what's going on. Um, I hope your daughter, awesome Larry, uh, I hope your daughter becomes a fan too. I wonder how old she is. And here's something, what's it like being a single dad and dating? Is it, is it, you know, like when you are a single dad and you're dating, do you prefer to date somebody who has kids or who doesn't have kids? Does it make a difference to you? Uh, is it harder to date people without kids or people with kids? Because I could argue both sides of the equation. I could say, um, you know, if, if you're a single dad, that it would be easier to date somebody without kids because then they don't have time constraints, that you don't have to match up your weekends, or it could be harder to date somebody without kids because they don't understand what responsibilities you have, how hard it is to co-parent, how you just don't have all that time to spend with them, how you want to take your time before introducing them and they might feel rejected by that. Like what are some of the obstacles that you come across when you are a single dad and you're dating? Um, and then how many single dads want to have more kids or what if you meet somebody and she wants to have more kids and you've already decided that you don't but you really like her is that a big struggle that you faced before hey Carolyn nice to see you love 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 seeing Carolyn pop up um, you know so what what are some of those challenges that you have men when it comes to finding the one that you're looking for or staying with somebody once you get into a relationship what are maybe some of the misunderstandings that women tend to have. You know, we had Patrick who was saying that women seem to expect men to be mind readers sometimes. So Larry says, 
The difficult aspect for dating is ladies are often too tense and not relaxed and have expectations that are not realistic. Let's see if I can expand this. Ah, re uh, expectations that are not realistic. I'd love to hear more about what are some unrealistic expectations that women have. I'm curious about that. Love to expand on that a little bit. Um, I can see the two tens part. My youngest is 18. I have two other daughters, 22 and 25. They need No More Assholes, my friend. Um, if they're not in a relationship yet, do get them a copy of No More Assholes because uh, I'm sure as a dad, you want to see them get into the right relationship. You don't want to see them get rushed into something with the wrong person. You know, No More Assholes is the vetting process. So first, selfish short-term thinking versus generous long-term thinking. You want them to get with a generous long-term thinker. And then for compatibility so that they're not falling in love with a selfish short-term thinker because that's where the heartbreak comes in. Um, so yeah, so expectations. And women being too tense, I see this also in dating quite a bit where, you know, it's once bitten, twice shy, right? And I've been through a bad relationship. It was a really tough breakup. He was a big fat douche afterwards. And then I get back into the dating scene and, oh my God, online dating, my God, <laughs> men, men, let me tell you, online dating for women is a shitstorm because there are horrible males out there who are just looking for weaknesses. They're looking for women who who crack under pressure basically and they're just overly sexual like honestly i have talked to a man who like basically he was with a, a female like a friend right female friend and they they were both online and they switched their phones to see you know what is what does online dating look like from the viewpoint of the opposite sex and he was like oh my god like, I cannot believe what is out there. And I mean, she was the same thing. Men, I'm not saying it's any easier for you. Um, but, you know, I can see both genders getting tense and, and coming to dates like, oh my God, is this going to be like another bad one? Am I going to have to block somebody again? So what is Larry? Larry says, my preference is a partner with kids who will understand my priorities and family values. And I'm not saying that's right for everyone, but that's for me for sure. So yeah, uh, online dating is also full of dishonesty. It is. Um, Joe says, single father with online dating is extremely difficult when the kids live with you. Really interesting. Interesting. So why? Why do you think that's a hurdle, Joe? Why? Is it more difficult when the kids live with you? Is it because there is less time? Uh, is it because you want to take more time uh, before introducing a date? So you really, you really keep someone at arm's length for for a while, and so that gives you less time and opportunity to spend time with them. Um, Difficult when the kids live with you. I want to expand on that. I'm so curious. Oh, guys, I wish I could get you in a conversation. So much more fun that way than like doing the chat thing. Uh, Amanda says, so much dishonesty with online dating. Absolutely, girlfriend, on both sides. Um, I know what the men are lying, well, not the men, the guys, right? When it comes to online dating, I know what the guys are lying about, which is um, I'm super secure. I'm not controlling at all. I am Mr. Wonderful. I have all my crap together. I'm over my ex. Um, you know, I have no dad, right? Like life is wonderful and I'm amazing, right? Uh, what do women lie about? Um, what do women lie about? Guys, type in your answer to that question. Uh, Joe says, working as much as I do and having children really limits time. Yeah, it sure does. Um, you know, I remember my, my husband when we first started dating, and I mean, the man works a hundred hours a week. So, uh, and he, he was co-parenting with his kids. So it was three nights a week. Um, well, not three nights a week, but it was, you know, like every Wednesday and then every other week and kind of thing. And then anytime the kids needed him. Right. So, I mean, there was like 4 a.m. phone calls sometimes where he would have to go and, and go deal with, uh, his kids when they got into the teenage years and started getting like a little bit more rebellious. Um, 
So yeah, but it's just I, I I remember really having to understand that this was the first, I mean it wasn't the first time I dated somebody with kids, but it was the first time I was serious about dating somebody with kids. This was the first time that it went longer than a month, right? And and I really needed to come to a place of understanding of what it meant to be with somebody who had children because it truly is a different dynamic. And you know, you when it comes to good men, right? Good men work a lot, just like Joe, because you have a lot of responsibilities and, and you're a long-term thinker, which means you're not just working for today, you're working for tomorrow and for the day after, right? You really want to plan ahead and you want to get ahead of the game. You don't want to end up 50 and in debt. You want to end up 50 with some freedom. And I know this about good men, so they do work very hard to support their future and their kids and their kids future and if they're good men then they're exes right and so that takes a lot of money and money is ours and so i had to really while they were young really come in fourth place right because work was a priority because without the work you can't support anything and then it was the kids, but in order to fully support the kids, he had to support their mom because that was the situation. And, and so while the kids were growing up, I really did come in fourth place after all of that. And I had to adjust, it is, it is tough, but this is what part of my work is, is waking women up to the reality of what a good man is because when you understand it, that it is, if you, have you heard about the marshmallow experiment where they put like four year olds in a room and they put a marshmallow in front of them and they said, that's your marshmallow. You can do what you want with it. I'm going to leave for 20 minutes and come back. And if that marshmallow is still there, I'm going to give you a second marshmallow and good men are two marshmallows. If you can wait. And I'm really trying to help women understand the value of a good man because he requires patience, he requires understanding, he requires, you know, delving into the psychology of men, getting who they are and working with their brains. We don't have the same brain. They process five to 7,000 words a day versus our 20,000 words. That's just one of the differences. We are not identical. We are puzzle pieces meant to fit together and create a greater whole. And when women understand how we can fit together and what they need to do to keep that relationship and nurture it and lift a man up because as high up as a man will go, he will prop us up even higher because that is their nature. That's what they want to do. That's how they're designed. It's so beautiful. I love men love men. I have nothing against guys, nothing against selfish short-term thinkers. My motto is go have fun. I'm just going to steer the generous long-term thinking women who want a relationship in the right direction so that they don't make your life miserable. Because when women fall in love with the generous or with the selfish short-term thinker and try to pull them into relationship mode, that's when everybody gets miserable. Joe says, women realizing men have to still support the baby mama is extremely difficult. Yes. Even good women have a hard time with that. Yeah, I'm going to tell you why. Because way too often, um, baby mama don't want to let go. And so when you have a new girlfriend, Joe, and other men who might have the same complaints, baby mama sometimes wants to compete because she might not want to be with you, but she doesn't want you to fully be over her. There's like an ego factor involved. And so she doesn't want to take a step backwards in your life and so she will compete and she will push against the relationship that you're bringing in and then the relationship that's coming in feels insecure about the relationship you have with the baby mama because you used to have sex and she's like oh they used to have sex and they used to like it and he used to love her and what if he still does what is you know and and i had that fear what if my husband would go back to his ex right so it is a hard situation for women to go into and that difficulty is compounded when your ex makes it more difficult. Caroline says, anyone that I've dated has never met my son. I do not want him to get attached to someone and then have, you know, have to break it off. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so one thing 
Uh, Joe says, for me personally, it's strictly financial, so nothing going on there. And that's, I mean, listen, I know this about men. When it's done, it's done. I know that men will earn their way out. They will try hard. They will try hard. They will try hard. But when it shuts down, it's finished emotionally. There still might be some sex going on because as I've heard men say, I'm a man and I have needs. And if a woman is putting a vagina in his face, most men will not say no. Um, and, and so I, I get that, but when the emotions are done, when the desire to be in a relationship is done, I know it's done. Um, so uh, Caroline, just a little, and, and this is for all the single moms and dads there. So Caroline says, anyone I've dated never met my son because she doesn't want her son to have to have breakups, right? Um, so here's something that I say to that. I. I, when you're interested in someone and you're, and you've had the conversation instead of the kiss, so you know that you feel there's potential, you want to explore the potential of the relationship, you feel that that other person is on the same page, and so instead of having a first kiss, you have a conversation, I like you, I want to see where this goes, but I don't want to kiss anybody I don't know, so I'm going to use this three month no kissing rule to make sure I'm going to kiss the right person, three months is not too short, not too long, and if there's somebody that you're liking in this process, then, you know, really this three months is about seeing if you can build a friendship. Can you be friends, right? And I don't want you to fall for somebody and then introduce them to your child and then they don't get along with your child. That's the danger in holding that off for too much. So I propose doing things together, right? So we're gonna go to the zoo and I have a friend who's going to join us. And it's, it's a friend, right? That's what it is, it's a, a friend. And have moments where you do bring them together to see what the dynamic is. It doesn't have to be all the time. It doesn't have to be every time you get together, but having those little, those little touch point moments where you're taking the temperature of the relationship between the people helps you make your final decision whether or not you'll kiss that person because kissing seals a deal and I'd hate to see you seal the deal on someone that you're, you're, you're gonna have to, you're gonna feel that it's like, oh, I have to choose between this relationship and my kid, right? So don't put yourself in that position um, make an early introduction if if you, you've come to a point where you feel you might want to kiss them and now you're using the three months no kissing rule. So men, what else? Uh, what else? What else we got from you, the men? What else do we want to talk about? What else is on your mind? What else are you thinking about? Let I, I, Okay, let's answer this one. Men, hmm? how can a woman win your heart? How can a woman win your heart? How can she steal your heart? What, what is that thing that makes you go zing? Um, what makes you feel special? What makes you feel cared for? I mean, obviously there's, there's gonna be those obvious answers, but I just kinda wanna hear from your words. And here's a really great question. What can a woman do on a first date that will impress you? I think this is a great question to answer. And, you know, I, I, I know some of you are going to say pay for the date. I'm going to give you some of my dating advice in terms of who should pay for a first date. And there's something that males, I'm going to generalize, I'm not going to say guy or man, but males don't really fully understand when they want to have that battle about, you know, split, splitting the check on the first date, um, that kind of thing. So I have a friend of mine, Justin, and you've seen him in some of my videos. And uh, we had that discussion about first dates. He goes, you know what, like I'm all up, and he's a gentleman by the way. He says, I am all up for paying for that first date. But if she doesn't reach for her wallet, then it is a turn off for me and there won't be a second date. And I said, okay, so I get that we are now in a modern society and women are equals and so, you know, there's this like equality thing, which by the way, is not happening at this point. If you haven't heard of the pink tax, let me educate you. If you go to Shoppers Drug Mart and you look at shaving creams for women, so Gillette shaving cream for women and Gillette shaving cream for men, look at the price and see if it's the same price. 
it costs more for a woman to have a shirt dry cleaned than it does for a man. I don't know why, his is bigger. It costs more for a woman to get the same buzz cut as a man will. I don't know why, it's the same buzz cut, but women do pay more. By the way, Rogaine does not have tax, but tampons do. So we are overpaying already. And um, here's the thing. And, and I had this discussion with, with my friend Justin. I said, Justin, when you go on a date, how long does it take you to get ready? He goes, oh, about half an hour. I go, okay. So let me tell you what she did to get ready for that date. She went to the hairdresser. She made sure that her, her highlights were up to date. Her roots weren't too bad. She went, that probably cost between $100 and $200. She went to the nail salon. If her nails were grown out, she got a new fill done, and that probably cost her about $40. Uh, now the makeup that she put on her face, you know, mascara is going to be $16, eyeshadow is going to be another $16, her eyeliner was about $12, so, you know, right there you have the cost that she's incurring just to look pretty for you. And, you know, so there's all these, and, and let me tell you, it took her at least an hour to get ready. So there's the physical cost of going on a date, making sure she looks good for you. There's the time it took her to get ready for that date. So already before she sits at the table, this date has cost her some money. And, and it would be nice if you took that into account and and not made it a standard that she needs to reach for her wallet on the first date because what i'm advising my women to do on a first date is make it a cheap date for one thing like he's taking them to dinner first dates were always dinner and i say to my women look a first date is a place where you answer one question do i want to see them again and nobody needs to pay a lot of money to answer that question so when he proposes dinner you propose a walk and let him pay for the coffee. Old school values I pay. And this is the thing with men too. I love, love, love how men are old fashioned. They have those old school values. They want to pay, they insist on paying because um, I, I think there's a recognition on their part. Joe, why do you think um, men have old school values? Like, like, where do you think the mentality for this comes from other than just, you know, something passed down? Like, why would men want to pay? What does, what does it do? What does it show? Now, my theory is it falls into the three Ps that men like to practice, which is protect, profess, and provide. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's a caveman mentality. Basically, it was born into us by Mother Nature to make sure that we survived in the wild. So protect us from danger and and profess, you know, to any other caveman who might be interested in trying to plant his seed in us. Uh, 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 that's my woman and I'm planting my seed in there and she's going to make my baby. And, and then there's the providing. So going out and doing the hunting and bring it back so that he can feed her because she's going to make that baby inside of her. And he knows all this on a fundamental level. Um, just as dates back to caveman days. There we go. Same page, my friend. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. We just had a total mind meld. Um, super, super cute there. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, what I want women to go towards is a good caveman because I can define that good caveman for you. They have similarities. Like, guys, listen, the only reason why we can be in this huge society and get along is because of the number of similarities that we share. So when I start to decode a certain type, right? So guys are a type, men are a type. And I'm decoding men for you so that you can recognize them and see them for who they are, appreciate them, give them the appreciation they deserve, and, and really just be grateful for their efforts, right? So, you know, I, I define this, this mentality for you and it really does pretty much run across the board. And what I want you to be with is a good caveman because a good caveman knows how to make a woman happy because he works hard for her 
and what he wants is a woman who will work hard for him so he can feel grateful and work even harder for her. Like I said, ladies, as much as you lift a man up, he will take you up even higher because a man with gratitude in his heart never lets that go unrewarded. Never. It is against their code. It is against their ethics. They will never let you be unrewarded. Uh, men have old school values, yes, because of the three Ps, yes. Also, some of us are traditional and hopeless romantics. Larry, I like you and are proud, yes, right? So that proud, ain't no, but ain't no woman gonna take care of me. I take care of my woman. It is the other way around. And, and they really want to go out and conquer and bring it home and lay it at your feet and they want you to say thank you. You are such a good man. I'm so grateful for what you do. And then, yes, okay to treat a lady. Um, and here's, you know, something that's so important. Um, and I advise people do this early on. Do this before your first kiss, right? If you've had that conversation instead of kiss and now you're like seeing where this goes, you're learning about each other, make doing a five love language quiz part of your learning process so that you can understand how he translates love and apply his love language and then see what he does. What does he do when he's grateful? I want to know, is this a taker or is this a giver? Because if you make a good man grateful, he gives. If you make a guy grateful, he goes, thanks honey, can I have some more? Joe, when we are sick, he can take care of us. Yes, yeah, so cute. My husband, I mean, he's tough as nails, that man. Um, but we also do hyperbaric therapy, which is um, basically you go into a tank that looks like a mini submarine and it pumps air inside and it compresses you. Now you don't feel squished, but your ears pop and, and it takes you, it's like you're going underwater, right? The deeper you go, the more you're being compressed, but it's not like you're squishing up. It's just, you're just under pressure and you inhale oxygen at the same time and oxygen travels through your bloodstream but when you go under pressure and you inhale oxygen it actually goes into your fluids and now oxygen is going into every single part of your body and it really helps keep you super healthy um give and takes has has to be reciprocal 100 percent if you only take from a man and men are generous right so generous long-term thinkers if you only take from a man, he will begin to resent you. And that's a tough place to be. It is it is hard to pull a man back from resentment. It takes, you know, like, like and, and the thing is we unwittingly hurt each other, right? Like sometimes we make mistakes we wish we didn't, but sometimes we just don't know better. When we know better, we do better, but before we know better, we don't do better. And so we can create resentment in a relationship. And when a man has resentment instead of gratitude, and then you change your behavior to make the relationship better, to build the gratitude, it takes time for him to really fully trust that this change in behavior is going to stay. It takes a lot of time and consistency in order for him to backtrack from resentment back into gratitude and openness and generosity. So know that, um, and this is why I say to people, like when you are starting dating, when you're starting to get into a relationship, the sooner you come to me, the sooner you start working with me, the sooner you get me to show you your next step, instead of pulling you back from the mistakes that you've made, the faster you will move forward because you won't infuse negativity in the relationship that I will then have to help you undo. Um, super, super important. Deborah, where do I know you from? <laughs> You're asking me. Uh, your name is familiar. I don't know, honey. I'd have to go take a look into your profile to see. I don't, where, I don't know. Do we know each other from somewhere? Did we meet at a book signing maybe? Um, I don't know, lovely. I don't know. I don't know. You tell me. Um, good question. So, let me see, what else can we talk about? I think, I think I'm running out of steam here, guys. I'm running out of steam. I wish I could get some more men on. would love to get more comments from men. Um, I, I, need to, I need to get on some kind of a system where I can bring anybody and everybody and not just people who are on iPhones. That would be so, so much better. So, 
um, men, I'm really hoping, well, I know, I mean, I'm hoping, but I know that you feel heard with the stuff that I say, that you appreciate the stuff that I say, uh, that you know I see you for who and what you are, and my mission is getting women to see what I see so that they can progress into the relationship in a way that makes sense to your brain because the more relaxed a man's brain is, the happier he is, the happier he is, the happier he makes you. And by the way, the happier you are, the happier he is. Men don't wanna control you, they don't wanna hold you back. They are conquerors, they want to see you conquering, they wanna see you have a life of your own, they want you to go do your thing, bring some knowledge back to the relationship, bring some happiness, some fulfillment, because they know you're just gonna spread that stuff all over the place. And the happiness that you have is the happiness that he has. And that's why when I say as high up as you lift him, he will push you higher because a man's goal is your happiness. Mother nature designed him that way. Why? What is the evolutionary purpose of a man wanting to see happiness on a woman's face? Because when the woman thrives, so does the child. And there's a fundamental part of his brain that knows that um okay so i'm gonna wrap that up for tonight it was so happy chatting with all of you it was so fantastic seeing all the men who were popping up love 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 it um guys don't forget i have a speed dating event coming up november 16 so be sure that you're signing up for that i've already filled some spaces i want to sell out my events i've got now I've divided it because you got you were saying that you want your age range instead of coming to an event and sitting for five minutes across from a person who's 20 years younger than you. You spoke, I listen, we have a 40 plus, we have a 40 under. I'm not saying you have to be 40 plus or 40 under to sign up for that specific category. It's who do you want to date? Do you want to date somebody 40 under? I don't care if you're 42, you can sign up for the 40 under. Do you want to date somebody who's 40 plus? It's okay with me if you're 35. Sign up for the 40 plus. It is all good. Age is just a number. Wherever you feel yourself compelled to go towards, I'm not going to stop you. By all means, the universe might be setting that person that you want, that you need, right in front of you that night, and I'm not going to get in the way. So message me for a ticket to my speed digging event. It's on a Saturday. It's 40 uh, plus is starting at 7 p.m. 40 under is starting at 8 p.m. It's going to be super fun. As usual, I will treat you like kings and queens because that is what I love to do. I'm going to have a cute little registration gift for you as well as food, beverages. Just come be pampered and meet some amazing, amazing, amazing people because that's who comes to me. That's who likes me is amazing people because I see amazing people and I love you all and we share so much love and it's wonderful. So I will say goodbye for tonight. I will be back here next Tuesday at 8 p.m. with Rebecca Thomas, but not here. I'm gonna be at the No More Assholes free webinar page and we're gonna talk about the No Kissing for Three Months rule, why it makes sense, how to do it, how to have those conversations that are tough to have, how to have the courage to do it. Mm so much fun we do this monthly because your education is my soul uplift because i know the more you know the happier you're going to become and i believe in karma and it's just going to come right back at me so i love you guys and i will talk to you so very soon